I think it's more to do with memories than bricks and mortar. It's where my family always are. Like, I always know that they're going to be at home. Home. Home represents a place where you can go and you can open the door and you're always welcome. <laughs> It's so nice and comfortable and it's old and I like all the things. I've been here a long time, a long time. <coughs> but I have dusted since. I hope you're not doing that, are you? <laughs> I've dusted and cleaned since. I've only lived in two houses in my life, yeah, when I lived next door and this one. It sounds a bit sad, that, doesn't it? Because when I got married, my husband said, right, we'll go down to the exhibition at London, at Olympia, and uh, you can have anything you want. I went, right, OK, uh, but that's it. You can't keep chopping, you can't have, like, ten, three suites and things like that. Once you pick the furniture to suit the house, that's it, you're not going to have any more. I used to live in London when I was younger. As you do, you have to go and sprout your wings a little bit. And, and I quite like that as well, because the parts of London is like... Parts of Newcastle, you know, there's little pockets. I liked it, but I was glad to come home. Well, all these years, you can imagine how many people you know. I think all your friends and the people that you love and care for, and just the memories. <laughs> Are you making some tea then, or what? Well, this is just a peaceful spot that I've found to get away from people. It's like an escapism, you know, I can chill out, read me books. When I first come back to Newcastle, I was sitting here and I could see the Tyne Bridge, the river, and I could smell it, the atmosphere of it. It was like coming home this for us, you know, just being in the area, even though I didn't have a roof over my head. It was a living job in the Lake District, and because I'd lost my job, I'd lost my place to live, everything. Like I say, I've come back to Newcastle, went to the Housing Advice Centre every day for nearly six weeks until the founders this place. And then as I were coming along the train line, I got the lump in my throat and everything, and I just had to dive into the toilet because I started welling up, and I'm like, oh, no, I'm not going to burst into tears on a train in front of loads of people. And it, I was in the toilet for about five minutes, composing myself to stop us from crying. Well, I stepped under here for nearly six weeks because it was out the rain, it was quiet. And then the kid messed it up because he had nowhere to go and I showed him where to sleep and he started bringing loads of idiots down, getting drunk, taking drugs. And the outcome of it was the last overdosed and died under here. That's why you see all the steel fixing there now, welded on, so people can't get under. All the odd ones on that side, all the even numbers on this side, so I think it's seeing now the windows, basically. Yeah. The hostel isn't my home. It's just a stopgap. It's just somewhere to get my head down, get my showers, get myself gathered up and get myself a few bits and pieces for finally when I do get my own home. I came into this country in 94. I did my degree here, and I met a girl who's now my wife. And then in 2003, we got married, and now we have a little child who was born here in the kitchen. When you say home, what do you actually mean by home? I think, mm. I guess the minute you, you move in, it's home, because that's kind of where you're, you're setting yourself up. But it's, I don't think home is, for me, something Stationary, I think it's something that's continuously changing. My wife, being heavily pregnant, we decided to change the whole house around. But it wasn't just the fact that the baby came that made this place feel like a home. It was also the fact that all of our friends and all of our community came to give us a hand with the house. There you go, there's some tea. Tea. Cheers. The longer we stay here, the stronger that feeling is every time we come back. We have made this our place, our home. 
I'll be honest, I didn't feel that way when I first came because it's very, very different from where I've come from. But over the years, and because I've been here for so long now, you start to kind of feel part of it, and then you realize that actually Newcastle's already a home. I'm Becky and I live in Hadron Park in Moors End and I've lived here for about 12 years and I've just turned 15. I like the house I'm in now. It's nice. I went to be in queue with my dad and we asked for orange paint and they showed us all the oranges and it, none of them was oranges I wanted it. So we got it mixed and it wasn't bright enough again. And then they asked us to come, like think about it and come back and show us what orange they wanted. And then as soon as we left, I looked at B&Q, and do you know how they're all orange and that? It's um, like, I went, Dad, that's the colour I want. So he took a photo of it on his phone, went back inside, and went, that's the orange I want, and they made it. So it's actually called B&Q Orange. Favourite part of my home would have to be my back garden. I love my back garden. I like my back garden because it's, it's big and, like, real nice and peaceful. It's got a pond. I like my pond because there's a big fish in it and it's orange. <laughs> Basically, I'm, you know, I'm a bloke and I, I don't need all these ornaments. This is what my mum and dad had. There's nothing wrong, it's clean, it's nice. But I want to get it done the way I would like to get it done. I'm 59 years of age and I've lived in this house for 51 years. And when we moved here in 1957, this became uh, our home. And I suppose we fell in love with it straight away. The day we moved in, my dad was here tidying the house up. Well, me and my two brothers uh, what a way to sit in Karoo for the day out. Because my dad felt that it would probably be in the way. I can see my dad doing things in my mind's eye, you know, watching him as a, as a small child doing things and trying to make this house into a home. My dad died in February 07. You know, I was actually cooking his uh, Sunday lunch and I shouted up the stairs and got no response and I went up and he was dead. You know, it's got loving memories of my parents and uh, grandparents and all my family and my brothers. A house is just a building. See, it's what you make of it in the end. And if it becomes a home for you, then it becomes a home. Let's come back to a house. It's comfortable and warm. It's like, it's where you live, it's where you're growing up, it's where you can go for safety and shelter and that. <laughs> My name's Tom Green, pleased to be here. I'm the next door neighbour. If you need anything, just give them a gift. Right. See you later, guys, yeah?